Thanos' iconic double-bladed sword is perhaps one of the most recognizable weapons in the MCU, despite having a very limited screen time. The sword made its debut as well as its final appearance in the same film, that film being obviously Avengers Endgame, and has left a lot of MCU fans with many questions regarding its functionality, origins, and capabilities. So stick with us today, watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, as we explore some of the most popular theories regarding Thanos' weapon, and possibly even deduce what it may be made from. First off, let's explore some of the capabilities of the sword that we got to see in its brief tenure on screen. While Thanos used it to bear the onslaught of Iron Man and Thor, and even used it to stand up against the might of Mjolnir in Stormbreaker, perhaps the most iconic feat of strength was it being able to break Captain America's seemingly indestructible vibranium shield. So what kind of material could this sword be made of in order to perform such a feat? Well, there are three principal theories. The first theory is that this sword was also made of vibranium, seeing as vibranium came to Earth in the form of a meteor. It stands to reason that more of it exists elsewhere in the galaxy. With Thanos' reach and capabilities, it stands to reason that he could have ascertained a sample of vibranium to make his own iconic sword. After all, we were able to see that Black Panther's vibranium claws were able to scratch Captain America's shield so it stands to reason that a sword of the same material would be able to cause much more destruction in the hands of a figure as strong as Thanos. In addition, it's important to remember that the Scarlet Witch was able to damage Thanos' sword in combat, and it's been confirmed that she has the capability to destroy Vibranium. But how do we know this? When she is tasked with destroying the Mind Stone at the end of Infinity War, we are able to see her energy creating distinct cracks in Vision's face, who is made primarily of Vibranium. It stands to reason that in her rage, the blunt force barrage of attacks that she unleashes on Thanos in Endgame are far stronger than the energy she exerted to kill the Vision and destroy the stone. The second theory is perhaps the least likely of the three, and would involve the minor retcon but it is an interesting thought experiment with wide ramifications on the future of the MCU nonetheless, and therefore we find it interesting to touch upon. The second theory is that the sword will be retconned to be made out of adamantium, which in the comics was a type of man-made synthetic metal that is most often associated with the Wolverine, seeing as it is the metal bonded to his very bones. The arrival of adamantium in the MCU could stem from research done on this sword in the near future, and the revelation that this sword served as the first Earthbound sample of adamantium and the basis of its reproduction could allow for the reputation of such an iconic metal to already be set in motion, despite never having existed prior. Though this would retcon the comic origins of adamantium, it would allow the alloy to make an MCU debut without having to explain where it had been all this time as well as garner a reputation as a metal strong enough to break Captain America's iconic shield. The metal could still be synthetic and man-made in the future, but the process could be based on the sword, and recreating the elements that composed one of Thanos' most iconic and deadly weapons. This reputation could serve to make adamantium a mainstay of the MCU in a rather short period of time. The Weapon X program would admittedly need to happen in the present day, however, but it wouldn't necessarily need to strip Logan of his age and hundreds of years of experience in combat. Logan's mutation arose far before his experimentation under the Weapon X program, with his mutation granting him an incredible healing factor, longevity, and bone claws far before the metal was bonded to his skeleton. Wolverine could theoretically undergo the Weapon X procedure in the present day based on the research done to Thanos' sword, but still be well over 200 years old and have the experience of fighting in major conflicts throughout history. He could still have the familiar bone claws that he had at the beginning of his career as a hero, as well as his healing factor, and only now transition to the metal bones and iconic adamantium claws. Although admittedly, this is a little bit more far-fetched of the theories that we're proposing today. It could be an interesting way to introduce adamantium into the MCU, giving it previous important precedence. The final and most popular and well-known theory is that the sword is made from none other than Uru, the same metal used to construct Mjolnir and Stormbreaker in the forges of Nidavellir under the guidance of Eitri the Dwarf and his blacksmiths. Thanos commands 
one of the widest intergalactic militaries in history and already knows the location and functionality of Nidavellir, seeing as he used it to commission the construction of the Infinity Gauntlet before slaying the remaining dwarves and shutting down the Ford. If Thanos got a sword from them some point in the past, then it may not have been as serious as a demand as the Infinity Gauntlet was. After all, Eitri likely commissioned a wide array of different weapons for multiple intergalactic warriors, not just those that belonged to Asgard, and it's likely that another galactic soldier asking for a sword made of Uru was not such a unique request. It was only upon being asked for a weapon that could harness the power of all six of the fabled Infinity Stones that Eitri refused, knowing the destruction such a weapon could cause, and consequently resulting in Thanos' massacre of the dwarves. Many may argue that it can't be made of Uru because we were able to see Captain America's shield withstand a direct hit from Thor's hammer in the first Avengers movie, again Mjolnir and Thanos' sword being made of the same material but the explanation comes down to simple physics. A wide surface such as Captain America's shield absorbing the force of another wide surface such as the face of Mjolnir would distribute the energy across more surface area. If, however, a small dense point of focus force such as the edge of a blade impacting another small surface such as the edge of Captain America's shield, because keep in mind Thanos is destroying the shield from the edge inward, then it is still highly likely that the sword could be made of Uru, with this being my favorite of the three theories theories proposed. But anyway my friends, what do you think of Thanos' unique sword, and what do you think it is made from, and where do you think it comes from? Do you like any of the aforementioned explanations, or would you like to see a different explanation for it, if any at all? As always my friends, thank you guys so much for watching this channel. If you would like to see more videos on various MCU topics, be it weapons, characters, lore, history, anything, please feel free to suggest it in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and have a great day.